Welcome to the Reader House Author Roundtable, where authors from all walks of life come together to discuss the trials, tribulations, and triumphs of publishing their books. I'm Alice Stockton Rossini. Join us here every Saturday night at 8 o'clock, or listen to our podcast anytime on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, and PodServe, just to name a few. The Author Roundtable is sponsored by Reader House Online Bookstore, where independent new authors come first. Four authors, Quantrice Hurst, Cherise Days, Allison Wilcox, and Lisa Thompson. One book. There are options besides murder, life, lemonade, and sharp knives. Now, if that doesn't get your curiosity going, I don't know what will. Quan and Cherise join me now, and I'm wondering, so the, the four of you guys just got together and said, hey, let's uh, write a book about murder, lemonade, and sharp knives. Wait, we did. <laughs> How did you guess? I don't, you know, it just came to me. Yeah, we we kind of, you know how you have uh, situations, maybe stories uh, that you talk about. Um, you might see something in the news. You might just have your own personal little situation and you're sharing. And as you're sharing and you're talking about it, you say, you know, this would be something great to tell other people so they don't make this mistake. Or this would be something, you know, we should tell someone so we can say, hey, here's how you can not fail in life. And we kind of giggled back and forth and just shared stories. And then, I don't know, out of the blue. Sharice, is that about how it came about? We just it, sort it of. Absolutely is. It absolutely is. We we decided to um, write. Some st- we We each wrote stories individually. And then we came together and we decided to read each story and give our takeaway from each story. And there came the book. Well, how do you guys know each other? <laughs> oh, related best friends and business associates. Yes. So Sharice, if that's on the call right now, she's actually my cousin. So known her all of my life, all of her life, because I'm yes. uh, half a year older. Okay. Yes. Um, and then uh, Allison Wilcox, my best friend, and best friends for almost 20 years. Okay. And then Lisa Thompson, business associate. What kind of business? We actually were in a startup company that was providing pandemic supplies. Oh, geez. So we got to know each other very well through all of the challenges and trials and, you know, issues with uh, COVID. I bet you could write a book on that. Oh, that would be. Mm. We have to take the. We have to change the names to protect. Um, yeah, I was going to say, people. you'd have to all go into witness protection. <laughs> exactly. And the name of your book is. There are options besides murder. There are options besides murder. That's not scary. I mean, <laughs> what happened to you guys? Where do we begin? I wish it was. You could say it was something that happened to us, but. Um, We have, again, we've known so many different people throughout time, so many different, um, you know, combination of family members, friends, again, news stories you might hear um, and just share and comment back and forth. And we, some of the things were kind of funny, some were sad and, you know, just tragic, but it was basically you, as people always do. You kind of comment on, oh, I could have done, I would have done this different, you know, uh, I wouldn't have, you know, gone to jail for something like that, or, you know, or I wouldn't have, you know, wrecked my car for a relationship situation. So you end up commenting about what you could have done differently or what would have been the smarter thing to do. So um, we, we kind of, as we were going through the different titles, I think it was Allison that threw that out there. And she's probably the, the quietest of the bunch. So it was so <laughs> funny hear her say that I know there are options besides murder and then (laughs) Sharice comes up with oh subtext life lemonade and sharp knives and we just died laughing (laughs) can you give me an example of some of the stories you're talking about the good the bad the ugly what you know what okay let's see um so in some of the stories you have a person that has been through a relationship and Um, the other half or the individual that they were in relationship with um, may have deceived them or um, was a cheater. And um, what the thought pattern of what came across the person's mind of doing to the person 
but instead they did something different. Okay. So give me, give me, give me an example of a story I'm going to find in your book. So give me some specifics. Oh, if only yeah. because now I'm really curious about who did what. <laughs> Let's see. I have one. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and confess. It was a story that I actually lived. I had a training course that I was providing, business training course. This was years ago. And one of the people there that was being trained was she had some serious relationship issues or problems. And she was just blasting every guy in the whole world, how terrible guys are, how deceitful and rude. I mean, she was going on and we kept stopping her and trying to get her back on training. And she continuously would keep just veering off and bring up any subject about she met a guy in a bar and, you know, he walked up and said hi to her. And she was like, what's your problem? And we were just you know, thinking like, hey, that's bizarre. Like, gee, she's got problems. Well, my husband stopped by my office to say hi. And as he popped his head in and he's like, hello, I just went around the room quickly and introduced the people, my coworkers, and then herself and her other person that came for training. And as I got to her, I realized that she was doing this really sexy side eye smile <laughs> at my husband. What? And we were like, um, everybody in the room is like, wait, is this not the person who just blacked at every guy in the whole world? And yet she is flirting, openly fl flirting with my husband. <laughs> did, did he notice? Um, he just had a little kind of perplexed look on his face and he just goes, uh, I was just popping by to say hi. And he stepped out and the whole time she's smiling at him and making like side eyes and, you know, I mean. I was just floored. I was like, how, you know, how do you come out of that? How do you be the professional in the room and, and not like, you know? <laughs> but I, I didn't. Wait, is that where the knives came in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I would have done. I mean, and you're the boss, right? I mean, right. you were, oh my God. What'd you do? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I, I, oh gosh, that was so hard because everybody else in the room, they were all watching that and they all had the looks on their face like, oh my gosh. And, you know, mouths were hanging open. And this lady just, when my husband walked out, she just repositioned herself in the seat and like, she's like, okay, let's finish training. <laughs> <And I'll... laughs> well, the story doesn't end there, does it? Did you do anything? Oh, yeah, we finished the training and dismissed her. And then we died laughing. We were like on the floor after she was gone. So it just was one of those things that happens that you say to yourself, I, that, I can't even believe that just happened. Did it really happen? You know, and then you just move on. But anyway, I thought of it over the years and I would tell people about it. We'd laugh about it. And we said, you know what? Let's put it in the book. And that That's was it. Cool. She's alive. I didn't do anything. Huh? Now, on a story like that, do your friends weigh in? Uh, on the various yeah. ways to deal with a situation like that? Uh, yeah, you know, some of the comments on that were kind of like, you know, oh, she's lucky to be alive, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, very lucky, you know. And then a few other people weighed in and they said things like, you know, um, clearly she has some emotional challenges and had some relationship fails in life. So that's something women, we should not do. Never do that. Never come out of uh, out of yourself and, and do things like that in the presence of someone else's, you know, spouse or something. That's that's not how you live. So, yeah, no, you're much you're much better off waiting until they're not looking. Don't you think? <laughs> OK, if you want to live if you want to live. Yes. <laughs> wait, wait, was your husband flattered by this at all or did he just uh, think she was a wackadoodle? I think that's what he thought, you know, and that was good on his part. He just thought she was wacky yeah. and moved on, you know, because, yeah, yeah, I could have went yeah, yeah. all the way left sideways. So, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, give me another one. Okay. I mean, I just, I'm trying to figure out, like, is this a, a book for women? Are, are these stories about young women in the office or just random? Oh, it's, um, it's across the board. Like, that story mm -hmm. was pretty funny, but we do have another story in where, um, uh, one of the other um, authors shared it wasn't her life story. It was uh, someone she was she knew, but it's like a young couple. The husband uh, comes home after they've just bought a house, had a baby, 
and he decides that you know, marriage is just not for him. But the lady that he decides to um, have an affair with, she actually has three kids. Well, after everything goes sideways to pieces, um, he decides because the TD lady that he's with, um, <laughs> she wants to have him be daddy to her three kids and he gets stressed out because he's like, this is stressful. I don't want to be the dad to three kids. I just want to be the dad to one. And, you know, of course, our comments were all over the place. We're like, well, that's something you probably want to figure out before Absolutely. you decide to cheat with a woman with three kids when you have a wife and one kid at home. And the guy's life just kind of went to pieces, you know, with all the different things that happened that created stress. And you look back and you say, well, um, duh, you just messed up her life. You messed up your child's life. You put all sorts of extra added stress in. And then what? For what? So it's kind of advice, too, to people to before you, there are some things where you really don't need a crystal ball. Mm -hmm. You can pretty much figure out it's going to be bad, like all the way around, no matter which way you flip it. Um, just think of that before you mess up your life and find out that it's it's more stressful with a wife, an ex-wife, three adopted kids, one kid of your own than it is with just one wife and one kid. You know, absolutely. <laughs> in, in In other words. The grass is not always greener on the other side. <laughs> Get out. You got to be kidding me. Come on. Are you sure? Well, you know, listen, some people, some people fall prey to animal attraction. I, I don't know. Does, you, does your book cover, you know, being in the office and being unexplainably attracted to a coworker and you're like... I have two kids. I, I'm happily married. My husband's great. Why am I so attracted to this person? And that person's attracted to you. And what do you do? That'll be book what two. What do you do? Book two. Look. Is that going to be Look. book yeah. two? Do you like that? Do you like that? Has that ever happened to any of you guys? Well, yeah, sort of, kind of. But you look at the eye candy and you're just like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, you have to control yourself. And you know what? Some people can't. And they just go with it. I think it was a Good Morning America. Those, there's two. Yes. There's the yes. weather guy. Yes. And they, what, what the heck? I mean, that was insane. I mean, they are not only messing up their marriages, mm -hmm. but like they're, career. they're in public. They're so public yeah. about their, their, it's crazy. That was crazy. I know. And yeah. It, yeah. And it's, it's like you, which way did they see that coming out like a fairy tale? That's the bizarre part. It's like, what about this did you think was going to really work in your favor? You know, you've lost your job, your marriages, your the whole world has watched this play out. I mean, just mm. they were the darlings of the news show. Yeah. And very beautiful yes. people to look That's at. Extremely. I, and I think what always you would think when there's children in the equation mm -hmm. that no matter what's pulling on you emotionally or sexually, there's these mm -hmm. sexual mm -hmm. urges that you have. You think I'm going to, if I really, if I think about my children and oh my God, my, my son or my daughter or my baby, my little one is going to, you know, how is this going to affect them seeing me with someone else? or cheating with someone else like you would think like isn't there something in your life that stops you in your tracks and makes you think and i swear to god sometimes there's not exactly, exactly. Mm. so I, that i guess like you said that animal attraction that, that gravitation um toward the well let's do this and see if we can get away with this um that, that right. thrill outweighs the consequences of the behavior um mm -hmm. and in i think in that moment um people are thinking more um not even thinking really but they're 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 working off of their emotions whereas there are a lot of people that have done that and I've, I've, I've i'm guilty of doing that not that but working off of my emotions and mm -hmm. that's one of the things that um this book covers is even though your emotions may get high or you may get angry or upset don't act out on your emotions you need to stop and think yeah. before you act so yeah. 
definitely that that that's yeah well i you know i can certainly relate to that i have a very I mean, and I've been around a while. I'm not like, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not a young woman. And, you know, you get to a certain point in your life and you go, geez, I still don't know any better. Like I'm still <laughs> reacting, you know, somebody upset me and I'm just reacting. Yeah. I, I haven't learned to like, where's the hand that's going to pull me back in myself? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why, you know, trying to, trying to develop that when you're a passionate, emotional, reactive person, because it's that very emotion that is that works for you in so many other yeah. ways like people love spontaneity mm -hmm. right right, right. Oh, got any examples of that in your book <laughs> well, let's see. Hmm. Uh, hmm. probably do i'm sure we've got like a couple in here um let's see probably let's see about the um <laughs> what about the young lady um that the guy was you know constantly trying to date and so, oh. we, so i think that that's a good example of that oh yeah we have a story of a professional in here who thinks that she's literally arrived she's going to be a lawyer and she's just passed the bar and she's she thinks she's at a certain point where she she expects to have a certain type of guy in her life mm -hmm. and she mm -hmm. almost overlooked a guy who was truly the solid guy simply because he was a little shorter yep. than she thought so she had in her mind what her guy the perfect guy was and and the perfect you know career and all of this and she ran into someone who literally was doing all the things that you want people to do. You want them to be your protector. You want them to notice you, that you want them to, you know, do things without you having to ask. And that's what this guy was. He was doing all these things. And luckily, she noticed mm -hmm. kind of at the last moment that he was that guy. He was the protector. And mm -hmm. that'll be in book two because we're going to do a follow-up story with her and where she is in life and it all turned out beautifully but it's like you can almost miss your blessing because you have certain expectations yep. and thinking that you know so you know what how about you can also miss your blessing because you think you're not worthy oh mm. so yeah definitely so we covered that um in a, in a lot of stories about um self-esteem um yeah. i know for me in in the book and there there's a story or two that that I have in there where um, I was going through some challenges in my life. And because of the challenges that I was going through, I just reached out and grabbed. Well, I'm not going to say, well, they sort of grabbed at me. But uh, my ex-husband reached out to me. And in the doing so of that, before the marriage, there were some red flags. So I didn't pay attention to the red flags. I went ahead and got married. But at the end of it, I had to make a decision. Is this something that I want to be in for the rest of my life? Or do I want to pull myself up by the bootstraps and move forward in my life? Um, so when it comes down to self-esteem, it's easier for us to get sucked into the what it looks like by a man. I mean, we're going to say by a man, um, one that takes care of you. But when you have get, giving yourself an opportunity to be with yourself and evaluate what, it, what is it that I want out of life? Um, how can I change things in my life to make me a better person? Then the decision making process changes. So mm -hmm. when you get to that level of, let me take a look at myself, let me pull away from the situation then your self-esteem goes up. And your when your self-esteem improves, this is just my opinion, when your self-esteem improves, your decision-making process improves as well. Now, sometimes I'm not saying that it always does because it hadn't always been like that for me. <laughs> but <laughs> I still make some bad decisions. But they were better than the bad, the worst decisions. They were they were better. I've made better decisions. Right. So, yeah, so that's, that's one of the main things we want to... Um, I, I really think um, among women in particular and man, women have a funny way 
of dealing with self-esteem. Mm-hmm. They can be cruel and awful to other women who threaten Mm -hmm. them instead of stopping and saying, why do I feel this way about this person Mm -hmm. and saying, oh my gosh, because she threatens me because I think she's better Mm -hmm. than I am because my self-esteem is so crappy that, you know, I can't bring myself to accept this other woman who, you know, if I really gave myself a chance to get to know her, maybe we'd be really good friends. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, God, I find myself bringing my own stories out here, but I had a woman because I was in a business that was male dominated mm-hmm. is continues to be male dominated. And when um, I trained this woman to be on the air at a radio station and I was working afternoons and when I came to mornings, she was so threatened. She did not speak to me oh. for seven years, oh my gosh. seven years. And I had so much in common with her. I mean, we had a lot of things in common and I never understood what that was about. But when I look back now, I think that's, I think I threatened Mm -hmm. her in some Mm -hmm. way, you know, and I I didn't take things as serious. She was very serious. You know, I work with very serious women journalists. They're very serious people. I'm not, (laughs) I'm really not that serious. You know, I'm not serious about anything. If it's not my mother, my father, my kids, my husband, I just can't be that serious. Right. Uh, Maybe I should be more serious, but that's another book. But you know, you get the point, right? Like we miss things because, and, and I just feel like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a man, I'm a woman, but I just feel like there's a lot of self doubt and women have to just because of the war, just because the world that we live in the male, we still live in a male dominated world. I just did a story about equal pay and I can't even believe the words that come out of my mouth when I say on average, women are making 83 cents on every dollar that a man makes. Why am I still saying that at 2023? Why? Probably in some cases work twice as hard. That's the crazy part. Hell yeah. (laughs) Yeah, like easily. Yeah, I mean, when you break it down, there's all kinds of reasons for that. But I mean, if that doesn't, let's just start there when we talk about self-esteem, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But I guess you know, in in writing this book now, I mean, you're putting out a lot of good stuff. Are you doing a podcast? Are you? How are you? This is great stuff to get out there to other women. I don't know how old you guys are. I don't know what. Did this stuff happen to you when you were younger? Are you are you young women? We are middle. Yeah, we're probably more your middle age. But honestly, these things that we have in the book, they they span all the way from way a long time ago till now easily. Right. Yeah. Yeah. In our lives, different stories. Yeah. But, you know, what you just did, what you just did and you went through and talked about, you know, different issues and instances of something that either a story reminded you of or a subject matter reminded you of that is what we intended for the book to be a a talking like you get it and then next thing you know you're talking about these things and I've had people so far who've read it they called and said hey when you do the next book I have five stories I want to give you you know I've I've got things happened in my life you would not believe and it's like you know okay (laughs) Well, yeah, yeah, because you look, you you work with people, you talk to people, you meet people. They look like they have it all together, and I'm telling you, nobody's got Thank it you. all together. Everybody's got a clink in the arm. Oh, you no, do? Do you have it all together? <laughs> you know, nobody. No matter how much money you have, no matter what kind of car Ooh. you drive, what kind of clothes you wear, there's a chink in the armor, baby, and and it's there, and and. You know, we just have different ways of expressing ourselves. And, you know, that's why they say like social media, mm-hmm. right? So everybody's got their shit together on social media, mm-hmm. right? They're beautiful. They're using the filters. <laughs> they're extolling the virtues of everything they, every breath they perfect take in life families. on Facebook. Perfect <gasps> family. Oh, oh, love those perfect, perfect children. Yes. Yes. I love those perfect <laughs> children. Send one my way. <laughs> Those perfect children and the perfect husband. Yay, perfect. And, 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 and oh, how about this one? I got another one for you. How about, how about, so you're married. Uh, there's an issue in your marriage. There's an issue in your marriage. Maybe your husband cheated. Maybe, you know, things went south. And 
all of your friends think you got to leave that mm-hmm, guy. Mm-hmm. You don't, you know, you, they don't know your story. They don't know what you've done. Right. They don't know what it's like behind closed doors <laughs> or maybe why your husband might have stepped mm-hmm. out for whatever reason. But they all think you should leave him. And when you decide to stay with him because you love him, you want to preserve your family, you have two beautiful children, perfect in every mm-hmm. way. You don't want to mess it up. You think you can work through it. Instead of supporting you, they turn Absolutely. on you. Oh, how about oh, that how one? About it? Let's take it a step further. You say you do leave your husband. And either you have one of two things happen. One of those advice givers decides to show up and tell your husband how ah you know i'm so sorry she left you uh, or no or you find out that some of those advice givers the mm. things they're going through in their life the things their husband has done and they're still right there yep and here you are and they're like well you know things happen and you're like but you gave me advice to leave my husband did this one thing Yours is doing all of this and you're staying? Why did you give me advice to leave? Why am I now out here in single land trying to figure it out and you're still at your house making things work? Hmm? So yeah, sometimes you gotta be careful. And we do have a few stories in there about the advice people may give you. And sometimes you might need to, you need to check that person before you decide to follow their advice. (laughs) How are you telling people about this? how are you getting people to read right this? Now like, are, are you doing book? I bet your book signings. <gasps> oh, you guys. Oh, my God. Do I have to come out there? Where are you? I have to come to you. <laughs> Listen, you've got a great thing going on oh here. My. I mean, so I mean, you've just hooked me in. I, I this is great. I'm sure there's other books out there because that's always one of my questions, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. What separates your book from all the other books out there about young women uh, old women, women issues, relationship issues, stories. St- you want these stories to get other people thinking, how it relates to their lives, maybe, you know, inspire them on some level, right? right. Um, how, how, go ahead. How does your book stand apart? You know, I, I think, you well, you want, I'll let you, you want to take it, Sharice? Well, yeah, I think that um, the, what makes this book stand apart is that these are true stories. We didn't make any of this up. Um, we've lived some of it. Some other people have, I'm going to put it like this. The ones that I wrote, it, it was all true. It was it was my stuff. And um, to have the ability to, to be able to get through a situation and to come out on the other side with a better outcome outside of um, taking a pot and bashing somebody upside their head or pouring the, some skull and hot water on them because they told you that they don't love you and they want out the marriage. Those types of things, we want we want to invoke thinking with our readers. We want them to be able to read the story, see the, see the humor in it, but also see the seriousness of what could happen if you don't think the situation all the way through. So we want to, we want to provoke that, that sense of, I don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. There's a better way. Um, So you go ahead and take it from there, Quan. So that's, that's why I still love it. Do you ask women to write in, to write to you, email you? Okay. I'm going to confess and say that we have not done um marketing (laughs) to the point that we should do it and we (laughs) you said life happens when we first got on this phone and i'm gonna tell you it does that's no excuse because you know what the book that we wrote we had been intending to write a book for a very long time Mm -hmm. and each individually said you know what i'm gonna write a book i'm gonna write a book i put i'm gonna write a book on my goals list it's been on my goals list for about 25 years And this was us saying, you know what, let's set a schedule. We're going to meet every week. Everybody has to come with a short story. We'll talk about it. And then we'll compile them at the end. At the end of all of our weeks, we'll go through edit and all of this. Then we'll pick a publisher. Then we'll do this. Then we'll do, then we're going to get it published and all of that. So it was systematically coming together and doing this 
after saying we wanted to do it for a long time. So not only is this book about the stories that's in it, it's also about the process in which we got together and yep. we as women decided we are going to follow through and on something that we all each individually dreamed about over the years of doing. And we did that. And so it's, it's it's our heart from the inside out. And well, this you, is where we failed. We haven't gotten the marketing no, out. No, you good. haven't failed. <laughs> Do not, do not say that. When did your book come out? When did your book come out? Oh, the end of the year, like a. Uh, it was in November. December. It was in November. It was. I remember. All right. Well, it was that's right a... after Thanksgiving. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's a crazy time, yeah. right? It's the, it's Christmas. It's holiday. Whatever. Hanukkah. Whatever you <laughs> whatever you celebrate. Whatever. It's crazy. The kids are in school. They got a million things going on. The Christmas concert. There's sports. There's if your kids are going to college. I mean, whatever. There's just a million things going on. So that is difficult. But are you guys all in the same place? No. Okay, so how from where do you live? Like, where how s spread out are you? Oh, all over. I'm Florida. Sharice is South Carolina. Al is in Florida too, but to, uh, we're about an hour and a half um, apart. And Lisa okay. is in Maryland. So, well, we're on so the east coast. you in <laughs> you're all on the east coast, but it, you know, I'm just trying to figure how would you do a book signing or I mean, the one thing I've learned from people because. I've never written a book. You know, I just interview people who have, and I'm dumbfounded. I just, I'm amazed because it's a process and it's not easy. And anybody who's written a book, I don't care if you don't make a dime mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you don't, the, and the only thing you're able to accomplish is getting it to the publisher and, you know, made into a published book. That is a huge accomplishment and you should be extremely proud of yourself yeah. for doing this. Okay, so that's the first thing. And in terms of getting it out there, it's you, you don't necessarily have to do book signings all together. I have had people say to me, you know, um, like there's book clubs, right? There's women who get together and they have book clubs in every town. Churches sometimes do it. My mother, she, she belongs to a book club. They love having, you know, looking for groups of women who meet sometimes you know you'll find groups in florida there's a lot of women who meet they get together they play games they do all kinds of stuff right, right? so maybe they would be interested in reading a book like this and discussing it a book club is a perfect place for reading and discussing so individually you could all look in your own towns mm -hmm. to to kind of to, to kind of drum up some interest that way because it's going to be difficult for you to all four of you get together and do a book signing or something that's going to be hard so you're going to have to work in your individual communities the other thing obviously is i don't know you know who's got the who's got the facebooking down the instagram down you know the social media down because if you guys were to start a page i'm thinking where you're talking about, you know, the things that you're discussing in your book and you're encouraging, welcoming, soliciting, tell us your story mm -hmm. and we'll discuss your story. You can do that. I, I just, you just need a social media person who can kind of set you up. So, cause that way, like if you're on Facebook, for instance, right, you can all go to the same Facebook right. page. You can look at somebody can submit something and say, well, you know what happened to me? Blah, blah, blah. What do you think? Blah, blah, blah. And what I like is that you're four women with real life experience. Nobody's a shrink. You know, nobody's nobody's got like a degree in relationships. You've just lived right. it. Yeah. You've just lived it. And you've all lived. It sounds to me like you've gone through everything. <laughs> is there, you know, like tragedy? Yeah. Is there tragedy? I mean, I, nothing... When when you hear uh, huh, people that have lost a child mm -hmm. and what that does, mm -hmm. a lot of people get divorced after they lose right. a child because, because, you know, it's a, like the weight of it. Yeah, the weight of it. Exactly. And just, you know, reaching out as real, decent human beings to others, right. you know, other women that that can be a powerful thing. Yeah. So there's got to be, I mean, and then there's also like, you could do a podcast, like somebody gets the equipment together, you loop everybody and you do what we're doing right now. This would be a great podcast. Really? This is 
great. This is that's um the direction we wanted to go. We've just been all swamped with different things, but I do have one thing to share that is just going to be as entertaining as possible. Um, Sharice actually, when we were reviewing the stories, she would read them out loud, and we were so I mean we would be in fits of laughter because she would put all of these fun inflections on it. So we wanted to do some audio clips and um, pieces and share them throughout to get people interested too. And we just haven't had the time, but it is it is so entertaining that that is almost more entertaining than the story is her, <laughs> her asset, which yes. the way she reads it. <laughs> well, that's a great idea because then you could share, you could share those clips. <laughs> That is a really good idea. And you know how to do that on your, you can do that on your That's phone. That's true. It, it's yeah. simple. We were going to try to get her some, uh, some recording equipment and we, um, so that is in the plans, but we just thought that was, it was just yeah. hilarious. We, we laughed so hard. We were just... <laughs> and then you share the clips and you can hear more on our podcast. And if it's funny and you're all laughing. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. So start with that. You know what? Just start here. Like we had this chat today and you know now you can i feel you guys i feel your brains are the wheels are turning you're they formulating are. ideas <laughs> yeah. yeah so so take it from here and and i'm gonna be your biggest cheerleader i think you've done a wonderful thing i love this thank you i love thank this so much um... <laughs> yeah this was fun i can't believe it you kind of sucked me in <laughs> i'm yeah. Listen, next book, I'll share some of my stories. What do you think? Hello. Look, <laughs> you already got us. We're like making notes over here. We could get back with her. She's got some stuff. She's got the <laughs> business side of things. And we wanted to do a business one on the things that happened inside the office that you just. Oh, oh, <laughs> isn't Harvey Weinstein enough? You know what's cracking me up? Okay, here's. All right. I will share this last thing with you. Okay. Nothing pissed me off more than the Me Too movement. Why? Because. You know, you see a creep like Harvey Weinstein who did horrible things mm -hmm. and, you know, he got basically what was coming to him. And now, you know, our society is going to change. Hollywood's going to change and we're not going to have that kind of stuff going on anymore. Are you kidding me? Hmm. Are you kidding me? What happened was a lot of women said, oh, me too. Me too. Mm -hmm. This guy did this. And instead of having a real me too story, they had vendettas. Right. And they started throwing knives. Talk about, let's talk about knives. Yeah. They started throwing knives. Let's get back at the boyfriend. Let's get back at the mm -hmm. husband. Mm -hmm. Let's get back at this who did this to me. And, you know, I'm going to show him. And that just diluted the entire message. Mm -hmm. They they weren't real Me Too right. stories. It wasn't a real. The movement became a joke. Because, I mean, didn't you notice, like, everybody who ever walked outside their door was guilty of Me Too. If you had a penis, you were guilty. You did it. You yes. were a me tour, right? Well, that's just not true. People right. make mistakes. People feel bad, right? Like there's all kind. They're human beings, yes. and we have to be really careful, right? The the workplace. If you look at Fox News right now, there was just a there was just an article today in the New York Times about uh, Maria Bartiromo. She's the money honey, and her producer, and they were. The producer was basically asked to lie when Dominion started asking questions about, um, you know, they Dominion, they made the voting machines and they were saying mm -hmm. the, the election was stolen and right. Fox News was so afraid to lose their viewers that they continued to perpetrate this lie mm. that the election was stolen and all of these votes were stolen and, blah, 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 and she was intimidated by... The likes of Tucker Carlson, mm. the male news people, the people who said, listen, when Dominion questions you in reference to this multi-billion dollar lawsuit they have against us, you have to say, you know, this. Mm -hmm. And she was, that was just today that came out. Oh, no. That was today. So listen, it is pervasive in the work. It's, it's pervasive in the workplace and it's still pervasive and it's always going to be pervasive and it just depends like on the industry like when you're in you know the industry I'm in like uh -huh. you're in radio you're in TV there are women who are so desperate 
to get oh, yes. to where they're going, oh, yes. they will bang the boss. Oh, they yes. will bang the boss and they will not feel bad about it. And you know what? If I want to bang the boss and not feel bad about it, I have a right to do that too. Right. <laughs> I don't agree with it, right. but then I cannot turn around and scream me too. You, mm-hmm. can't. you can't do that. Right. Oh, that is so true. That is yep. so, oh my goodness. That is so it's So, true. you know, and that kind of crap, it goes on. And honestly, I don't think that this world that we live in is capable of changing men unless women start running the world but you know women get to a point where they go oh i have children gee they they seem they seem a little bit more important than becoming the coo of this Mm -hmm, company mm -hmm. like we have a tendency to oh oh, oh, sorry put our put our families first you know what we get for that what do we get for that 83 cents on the dollar that's what we get right (laughs) right right (laughs) And a headache. <laughs> Damn headaches. Lots of headaches. That's for me for right. vacation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you could do like a whole thing on that. I, you know, I I think it would be interesting if you solicited stories okay. from other women. And if you just started with other women that you know, what yeah. are they telling you? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, oh, I okay. definitely yeah. have some. I know, Sharice, now she has lit our fire again. Yeah. I mean, we are, uh, you know. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. well, listen, you got my number. You get back to me. Let me know how you make out. Thank you so much, Allie. Allie thank thank you. you. This was so much fun. Yes, it, was it was so nice to meet all of you. I wish I hope, I hope I could meet the other two authors one day. Yes. We'll make sure thank they're on you. the next one. Thank you. You, you guys have a great day, you all right? Take Bye-bye. care. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, we hope you enjoyed this edition of the Reader House Author Roundtable, where authors from all walks of life come together to discuss the trials, tribulations, and triumphs of publishing their books. I'm Alice Stockton Rossini. Hope to see you back here every Saturday night at 8 o'clock or listen to our podcast anytime on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, and Podserve. The Author Roundtable is sponsored by Reader House Online Bookstore, where independent new authors come first.